I'm stoked for this new series we're calling Seasons. Seasons is the name of it. The big idea here of this series is that um, God has and operates in seasons of our life, that, that we don't stay in the same season. There's ups, there's downs, there's, there's all overs, but God has a purpose for every season in our life. And, and really, when you talk about like, like understanding the seasons, what I'm, really, what, I, what I'm really hoping to do in this series is get us to not only understand, but to cooperate with God in the season of his timing, that they're to really walk in the Holy Spirit, to understand his, his timing. And, and how many of you know timing is everything? You ever hear that saying? Timing is everything. God has a, an appointed time and a due season for everything in your life. Look at our theme verse is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, um, verses 1 through 8. It starts off, says, to everything there is a season. Say season. season. There is a time for every purpose under heaven. The, the good news about this is everybody in every circumstance, God is in control. God is in control of the seasons of the, hey, there's good times, there's bad times. There's times of hurt or pain. There's times of success and victory. But hey, God is in control of them all. And and if I stay in step with the Holy Spirit and in the season of his timing, there's purpose. Go back. I pointed at it. I don't know. There's purpose. There's purpose in, in that season. There's purpose in the pain There's purpose in the delay. There's purpose in in that situation. If you stay in step and in season, there is a season for everything under heaven, appointed time. So we're going to talk about the, the, how do you understand what time is it? How do I, how do we really understand and now cooperate with God so I can stay in step and in season? Okay. He goes on to say, he kind of Ecclesiastes goes on to say a lot of different times that God is in control of a time to be born and a time to die. That's God. That makes, that stresses some people out. It doesn't need to. God is in control. He's, he appoints the times. It's a due season. A time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal. For those of you pacifists, that's Bible. You come into my house at 2 a.m., that's a time to kill, okay? You come in there, break it into my house at 2 a.m., that's an appointed time, sucker. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. There is purpose. When I'm walking with God, I'm in step with the Spirit and I'm in season. In step and in season, there is purpose in all of it. Here's the challenge that many of us get in. We have, because of our personalities, our preferences, and our priorities, it conflicts with God's season. See, we want, to stay in, we want to stay in the season to, to dance, but God says, no, you need to mourn some things. We want to stay in a season to laugh, but God says, no, no, no. We want to stay in a season, uh, uh, and God says, no, it's time to move on. Stay in step. Stay in rhythm. There's a pace of the Holy Spirit, and every time you get out of the pace of God, out of pace, you get in trouble. There's a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. See, our preference for some of us, we want to we wanna keep, refra- we want to embrace, we want to bring closer. And God's already, God's moved on to another season. He says, you need to let that go. You need to let it go. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent, a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. How do we know what time it is? How do we know? Timing, timing is everything. To know what time it is, to be in step with the Holy Spirit and in season with God. He goes on, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, he goes on and says that there is a right time, say right time, right. and a right way, say right way. Okay, it doesn't matter how right you are. It doesn't matter if you had the right idea. If you, if you came off the wrong way in the wrong time, he says, man, you know so little. Oh, you think you know so, you think you're so smart. You got the right direction. Oh, you know what to do, but you gave it in the wrong way in the wrong time. The Bible says, you know so little. You think you're so right. You think just because you have the right answer, you got the right idea, you have the right direction that makes you right, oh, you, you know so little. 
Really, what, you, what we need to learn is how to keep in step and in season with the Spirit and what the Spirit is doing in our life and around us. Timing is, every, timing is everything everywhere you go. Like timing in sport. Timing is everything in sports, isn't it? The, the, between a quarterback and a receiver, if the timing is off, it's an errant throw. It's an interception. The timing of swinging the baseball bat to hit this, I never could do, ba- I, I, that was one sport, one sport. That baseball, it's like, it's almost impossible logically to hit that ball. <laughs> Yet the timing is everything. Timing is, is everything in business. When do you make an investment? When do, you, when do you make the investment? When do you pull out of it? When do you, when, timing is everything in, in music. You know, you gotta, you gotta be able to keep time in music. You gotta be able to keep tempo and time. And if you can't keep time, get off the stage. It's not good. It doesn't sound good because timing is everything. Timing is everything in leadership. You gotta know when to make the risk and when to, be, and when to reserve. You gotta know when to change and when to remain. You gotta know when. You have, timing is it's everything, the right, the right way and the right, the right time. Okay, let me, let me show you what happens when you get out of step and out of season. Just some different examples of the right way, the right time. And write them down in your notes, you guys. The first one is when we, when we apply the wrong action at the wrong time, how many of us have been there? Disaster. Disaster. Whether, whether the wrong action was, you know, we weren't being led by the Spirit. We weren't, we weren't being led by His Word, applying the Word of God to our life and making choices based on God's wisdom and God's Word. It was just the wrong action, the wrong way, the wrong direction. It was the wrong time, man. You didn't need to have that conversation on the way to church at that time in the way that you did it, did you? It gets you into trouble. It's just disaster, wrong, wrong, wrong action. The wrong time will always be disaster. How about this one? The, the wrong action at the wrong time. A little bit less, not a disaster, but it's a mistake. And some of you have this, like you can discern the timing. Like you have this, whether you're entrepreneurial or you just have this discernment, you can under, like you have this time, you know it's the right time, but, but you sometimes apply the wrong direction, the wrong action. It's, it's, yeah, I got a sense of it. I should have this conversation with him, but, but I came off angry and frustrated. It was the wrong action at the right time to be a mistake. How about this one? How about the right action at the wrong time? You ever, you heard the phrase spoke too soon? Yeah. How about put your foot in your mouth? Okay. You ever, if you've ever given somebody advice, before they were ready to receive that advice, what'd you get? You got resistance, didn't you? Anytime that you have the right action in the wrong time, you'll always come up against some, some re- resistance because you're not in step. You're not in season. We got the, you got the right idea, the right direction, the right action, but you're out of step. You're out of season, okay? You might be, it might be your preference. It might be your personality, whatever it is, but... but God has a due season, and you're going to get resistance every time you try to, try to get out of the pace and rhythm of God, out of season. But what happens? What happens when you apply the right action to the right time? Great things happen. When you stay in step and in season with God, I'm telling you, you will experience success in your life. When you stay in step with the Holy Spirit and in season, great things begin to happen. And I believe, you guys, that there are, there are pivotal moments that God brings into our lives, windows of opportunity. There's the moments where divine opportunities, where it needs the right action at the right time that I'm in step and I'm in season and I'm able to seize it. There's, I'm telling you, great things happen when you're in step and in season with God. And all throughout our life, there is these, these opportunities and pivotal moments. And what I hope to do in this series is to, is to teach you how to identify the season, how to understand the season and cooperate with God that you would, that you would be in step and in season and experience success because there's a rhythm of God. There's a pace. First Kings chapter 8, 58. Again, Solomon, who wrote Ecclesiastes, writes this. It was a prayer. He said, may God keep us centered and devoted to him, following the life path he has cleared, watching the signposts, keeping a lookout for God. What is God doing? What is God saying? How is he moving and walking at the pace and the rhythms 
that he laid down for our ancestors, that there is a pace of God's spirit. There is a rhythm that God wants to order, structure, move, and advance your life in. And when you get out of step is when you get in trouble. When you get out of step is when you can get when you get in a lot of trouble. So all that, all that, that's just kind of a, a introduction to this series that we're calling Seasons. There's four, four topics that I want to cover with you in this. And there's a lot of, in Ecclesiastes, he goes over a lot of different topics and a lot of different seasons. We're going to cover four major ones. Just like in, in, in weather and in our environment, there are four major seasons. I believe that there are four major seasons that all of us will experience in our life, and if we could just, man, if we could just understand them, be able to see them, the signpost, and, and be able to cooperate, stay in step and in season, we can experience more success in our life. Can I get an amen? Okay, so what are the four seasons? Here's today we're gonna talk about harvest. Next week we're gonna talk about, these aren't in your notes, we're, next week we're gonna talk about famine, okay? Or, or drought, or, or the dry season. How I many you know that, that there is purpose still even in that, that there is God can speak and move if you stay in step and in season of that drought, of that dry season, of that famine. There is purpose if you're walking in step with God in that season, okay? Now, we're going to talk about harvest today. Next week, famine. We're calling it faith for your famine. How I many you know you need faith for your famine? Amen. We're going to talk about that next week and what you need in the season of drought or that season of dryness. Part three and four are war and peace. And this one's so huge that you would understand and cooperate in the right season because, again, wrong action, wrong time, it could be disastrous. Disastrous if you, if you are out of step and out of season. When you are operating in a, in a season of war, when God says, this is a season of peace, you are out, there's disaster. Jesus came, when Jesus came, the Messiah came to earth. The people thought, oh, the Messiah's gonna come and he's gonna bring war. He's gonna come with a sword in his hand. He's gonna take over government and all oh, that's, that, and he's gonna come riding on his horse of victory, his white horse, and he came riding on a donkey as a man of peace. And because, check, listen, please, because the people who loved God, religious people who loved God, they followed God, they were zealous for the law and for God because they were out of season and they were out of step, they didn't recognize the right season and the right man and the right Messiah and they put him to death on a cross because they thought it was a season of war when it was a season of peace. You see, Jesus is coming back again and he'll be riding a horse. He'll be coming as a man of war to bring justice once and for all and to cast out Satan in his dominion of darkness once and for all. That'll be a season of war. But because some well-intentioned believers in God were out of step and out of season, disaster happened. Oh, man, I, I already want to preach this, okay? This is, I'm excited. So what, what we're, what we're going to talk about is how do you know? How do I know when it's a season of war? How do I know when it's time to fight? When it's time to fight, how do I identify that? And what do I, how do I fight? And then how do I identify the season of peace and, and influence and walk in that? How do, I, how do I know what season it is? All right, yeah, that was all just an introduction today. Today we are gonna be talking about a season of harvest. Season of harvest. How do I handle the harvest that God has given me? The the whatever increase, whatever provision, how do, I, how do I handle that? How do I identify it? In your handout, your notes, on the back side of that, um, well, we're actually going to start today with God's harvest principles, and then I'm going to jump to what was first in your notes, handle your harvest, okay? I'm just, I'm just I'm messing you up today, I know, okay? But we're going to start with this, and we're going to go to that, God's harvest principles, because I want to, uh, in order to in order to cooperate and be in step and in season with your harvest, you got to understand some harvest principles. Then I'll show you how to handle it, okay? You ready to take some notes? Did I mess you up too much? You ready, church? Okay, here we go. Galatians chapter 6 says this. Do not deceive yourselves. No one makes a fool of God. You will reap exactly what you plant. This is God's law of harvest. You can't plant oranges and expect to get apples. You can't plant gossip and expect to get peace. Come on, somebody. You can't plant anger and expect to have healthy relationship. You, you can't. This is, this is the law of harvest. It works in every area of your life. 
this law will work, what you are reaping into, into your life. If you don't like what, what you're reaping, what you're harvesting in your life, take a look at the seeds you're planting in your life. Take a look at the words you're speaking, the thoughts you're thinking. Take a look at the energy you're sowing into. Where is it going? Well, sure, that, that's the source of what you're reaping. It's called God's harvest principles. Let me give you three of them today. Three harvest principles in order for you to handle it appropriately, understand it, identify it, cooperate with the season of harvest. Number one, I always reap in a different season from when I sow. You just, you got to know that, that there is a time delay from when I make the effort, from when I make the deposit and to where I get the fruit. You know this, plants take time to grow and it's frustrating sometimes, isn't it? But no farmer plants a seed in the ground, in the soil, then comes back the next day and digs it back up and go, did you grow? Where are you at? You know, and then no one does that. No good farmer does that. All right. There's always a time delay from the time I invest into the time that I reap. The Bible tells us there are seasons in life. Back to Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. There's a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to scatter seed, and then there's a time to gather it. So between the time of then and now, or now and what's coming next, there is always a delay because fruit ripens slowly. It ripens slowly. Uh, It never ceases to amaze me how many people think God is a slot machine. You put in, you, you put in your you're a little bit, and you slot, and you just, come on, where is it at? I gave my tithe. Nothing happened this week, Pastor Jason. That's not, God is not your slot machine. God is not a genie, and you're, okay? He, you, he don't serve you. You serve him, okay? It's, it's, it's the other way around. But while I'm waiting, you need to understand this about this principle here. While I'm waiting after I planted that seed, God is working. While I'm waiting... God is working. It may not look like it. It may, because it's happening underneath the surface. It's happening underneath the soil. See, I, I, can't, I can't cause the seed to grow. While I'm waiting, the, per, the, the God who causes seed to grow is working. It's working beyond your sight, beyond your, beyond your purview. But, but as you, when you sow, you, when you reap, or when you sow, you always reap in a different season. God is working that seed. He's causing that seed to burst, to grab roots, to to one day spring forth. I always reap in a different season from when I sow. You have to, you got, in order to understand that the season, to stay in step and in season, you have to identify that. Because when you plant, it's not harvest time yet. You you harvest in a different season. And while, and sometimes we think, oh, God's not working, man. I've been, I've been investing into my marriage. I've been, I've been investing into this relationship. I've invested into my career and my calling. And man, I've been, no, it may not look like it, but God is working behind the scenes. You, you believe God is working behind the scenes. Here's the second principle. I always reap more than I sow. I always reap more than I sow. Now this is for good or for bad. This, can, this is positively or negatively in your life. You always reap more than you sow. This is the principle of multiplication. And you get this. So if you have one kernel of, uh, kernel of corn, You plant that in the ground, you don't get one kernel of corn back, do you? No, you get a harvest. You get a stock of corn with multiple ears, hundreds if not thousands of kernels because that's the exponential power of the seed that is planted. You always reap more than you sow. In the parable of the soils, Jesus points this out. Mark 4, verse 8. Some seed fell in good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop multiplying. That's what seeds do when you plant them. They multiply 30, 60, and even a hundred times. What he's saying is that not all plants bear the same fruit. Some give 30 fold increase multiplication. Some give 60, some give a hundred, but it's true in every area of your life. If you think that you can go and give one gossip and get one gossip in return, you are fooling yourself. You put yourself in the gossip chain now, didn't you? Okay, you give one gossip, you're in the chain. Now it's going to come back to you with an exponential result. All right, that's this is this is the the principle of multiplication. Um, number three, here's number three, the next principle. I can increase my harvest by planting more seed. That's what I can do. I can increase my harvest. 
in every area of your life, not just financial. This works financially, but in every area. Look, you want your marriage? You want your marriage to, to be better? You can, you can plant more and sow more into your marriage. You're going to get what you sow into it. Yo, you want your kids to get A's? When's the last time you sat down with them and did some homework? Oh, come on, somebody. Am I, am I striking the cord? Okay, you can, you can get more harvest if all you did is spend more time with the kid. Okay, you expect A's and you got C's your whole life. Get out of here. <laughs> you, you don't like the paycheck you're getting? Okay, fine. Go to school. In fact, plant seed into your career. Plant, sow more seed into whatever soil that you want to see more increase. You can get it if you plant more seed. This is the law of proportion. That's what it is. You always reap in proportion to what you sow. If you sow a bunch of seed, you're going to get a bunch of crop. If you sow a little seed, you're going to get a little crop. If you sow no seed, you're going to get... That's, uh, yes. Isn't that amazing? No, you get no crop. This is true in every area of your life. Not just giving. It's true of tithing. It's true of your energy expenditure. It's true of your talent, your intelligence. Every area of your life, you can increase your harvest by planting more seed. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Okay, if I want, if I want more intelligence, i got to sow into my intelligence. If I want healthier relationships, then I need to sow into that relationship. That's it. Whatever you're reaping is, is, just, is just the result of what you're sowing. That's all. That's all. If you, if you, reap, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you, whoever sows generously will, though, reap generously. Each one should give what he decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, this verse is particularly talking about money, but it applies everywhere. It does. And you've heard me teach it before. This word cheerful, the Greek word is hilarious. It literally means that God loves hilarious givers, that people that are excited and ecstatic. And we should be, shouldn't we? We should be excited to give because we know the principle of multiplication. Whatever I give multiplies back toward me. Uh, we know the principle of proportion, that there is an exponential effect of the seed. We should be excited to sow into our marriage, to sow into our career, to sow into our calling, to sow into our children, to sow into the kingdom because we know that more is coming back in return. Can I get an amen, somebody? This is God's his harvest principle, and you just you need to understand them so you can stay in step with them. So you can stay in step and in season. So how do I handle the harvest that God has given me? How do I handle, how do I apply the right action at the right time so that you'll be blessed with success? Okay, how do I handle the harvest? Now, even saying that, I gotta, some of us, okay, what's, what's a harvest? What is a harvest? Some of us think of that word harvest, and, and, and your mind goes to the lottery or something, you know? Oh, I wish I had a harvest. You know, a harvest would be great. You don't want to know. Listen, this is what a harvest is. A harvest is whatever you reap from that which you've sown. That's your harvest. It's whatever you've reaped from what you've sown. Some of you have a small harvest, comparatively. We're not going to get into that, into what really you do have, okay? But some of you have smaller harvests. Some of you have larger harvests harvest, okay? Whatever, it, it's, whatever you sow, you sowed hours into your work, you get a harvest back in proportion to the hours you've sown. So check this out. You get, you get harvest, some of you, every two weeks. Some of you get a harvest every month. And the reason why you're not handling your harvest is because you're not treating it like a harvest. And you're out of step. You're out of season. God is giving you harvest, and so I, I, what I want to do is, is, is I'm going to give you some financial principles. I'm going to give you several financial principles today so that you can handle your harvest that God is giving you, that you can treat that which you are, whatever it is that you're getting. You think you get a little, you think you get a lot, whatever it is, that you can handle your harvest, stay in step and in season and experience God's blessing and success. Can I get an amen? amen. 2 Corinthians 9 says this, you will be made rich in every way, not just like finances, but God wants, to, God wants to give you harvest in every area of your life. He wants you to experience favor and provision and relationship, harvest in your relationships, harvest in your health, a harvest in every area of your life, rich in every way, so that you can be generous on every occasion, literally so that you can keep sowing. 
God says, look, I want to keep blessing you, giving you harvest, you can keep giving it away. I want to give you energy so that you can give energy away. I'm going to give you some intellect so you can give intellect away. I'm going to give you more gifts so that you can give more gifts away. I'm going to give you more resources so you can give more resources away. Be generous on every occasion. Why? So that through that generosity, through your sowing, that people would just result in going, wow, look at God in that person's life. People say, wow, look at that person. Look, that's just God in their life. Wouldn't you want that? Wouldn't you want to be in step and in season and handle your harvest? Let me give you three things, three things that we need to do in order to handle our harvest, to apply the right action at the right time, okay? The right action at the right time of our harvest. Here they are. One, number one is, I will give God the time. And that's not usually something you start with first, but it is the priority, so I put it first. I will give God, literally the tithe means 10%. But biblically, that's really not the meaning of the tithe. It's not. So let me say it this way. You can give 10% and not give it first, and it's not the tithe. See, because the, the order is important to God. You can give 10% and we did great things with it. Thank you so much. But it didn't communicate the same thing to God. Deuteronomy 14 tells us the purpose. The purpose of tithing is to teach you to put God first in your lives. That's the purpose. See, God, God put tithing as a principle so that we would learn to honor him as first place in our life. Tithing is a, rem a reminder that God is the supplier of everything we have. But it's, it's also a personal invitation when we apply the right action at the right time, when it's harvest time and I apply the right action, God, you're first. It's an invitation to God's blessing and provision into our life. Malachi chapter three says, bring the whole tithe, not just a little portion, not just, oh, I just give a little bit every, every time I, I come. No, no, no. He, bring the whole tithe. And when you apply the right action at the right time into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house, so that there may be spiritual food continuing, look what he says. Test me in this, God says. Bring the whole tithe. Bring, bring, test me in the only place in the Bible that God says to test him. The only place in the Bible. Every other place says, don't test me. Don't tempt the Lord your God. Do not, don't, don't put him to the test. This is the only place where God says, test me in this. What he's basically saying is, okay, check it out. You give, and then I'll give to you. We'll see who can outgive. I dare you. I dare you. See if you can outgive me, God says. Just see if when you, when you apply the right principles, we can stay in step and in season. See, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. <laughs> this is the only place the Bible says, test me in this. And really when it comes down to it, giving comes down to two fundamental questions, you guys. Is God wise and is he trustworthy? And if you believe that God is wise, if you do believe that, then you should apply his principles to every area of your life, including financial stewardship. And if you do believe he's trustworthy, then you should trust him with every area of your life including your finances. Is God wise? Is he trustworthy? I'm trying to help you handle your harvest, that you would stay in step and in season with God. When it's harvest season, what do we do? We handle it. We give God the first. So here's the challenge. With every one of these steps on how to handle your harvest, I'm gonna give you not only a declaration statement, but a really practical challenge with each one. Here's the challenge, that we are gonna take the 90-day tithe challenge. The 90-day tithe challenge. And if you're new to Discovery today, this ain't for you. This ain't for you. I hope you're getting something out of this and you're hearing and being inspired by the word of God in different ways. But for those of you, there are some of you that need to take a 90-day tithe challenge. And inside of your bulletin is a card that looks like this. Should have got a card. The 90-day tithe challenge actually just takes God at his word. Malachi 3.10 says, test me in this. So if you want, if, if, you're, if this is your next step, no arm twisting. You guys know that we don't twist arms here at Discovery. I'm just, I am preaching the word of God and teaching the truth. That's what I'm called to do. And I'm trying to help you out today and put your finances under the provision and under the anointing of God. And if you say, you know what, I'm gonna take that challenge. He said, test me, test him for 90 days and tithe for 90 days on all your harvests. Do it, handle it, handle that harvest. Apply the right action in the right time and see what God does. And at the end of 90 days, here's the challenge. At the end of 90 days, if you are not more blessed, and I'm not just talking about financially, but 
If you, just, if you think that your life is not more blessed after 90 days, let us know. We'll write you a check for your whole 90-day offering amount back to you. Okay, that's, and it's not a gimmick. God said, test me in this. We've done this now at Discovery for the last couple years. And we have so many stories of God's provision and faithfulness. After the first service, I heard multiple stories. Um, there has never been anyone at the end of the 90 days say, you know what? I just don't feel more blessed. Why? Because God is wise and God is trustworthy. God is wise and God is trustworthy. Okay, you want to handle your harvest? You want to stay in step and in season? Put God first. Okay, give God. When it's, when it's harvest season, give God first. Here's the second thing you need to do. Novel, if you want to handle it, handle your harvest. In the season of harvest, to stay in step, okay, and in season. Not only am I going to give God first, here's a novel idea. I'll decrease my debt. That's what I'm going to do when I get a harvest. Did you know that 75% of Christians live paycheck to paycheck? Not knowing, like, what, you know, what we're going to, how we're going to make it. Paycheck to paycheck. Finances are, they can feel like a black hole. They, they can, when they're out of order, it can bring you so much stress and anxiety and lack of peace. It can destroy families in this area. When you're out of step and out of season, it is so destructive. It's probably why Jesus talked so much about money. He, he, it's why he, he talked about it twice as much as he talked about heaven and hell combined. Out of the 38 parables that Jesus told, 16, 16 of them had to do with money and possessions. Five times more is said about money in the New Testament than about prayer. And, and while there are 500 verses about prayer and faith in the Bible, there are over 2,000 verses about money and possessions. This is important. And some of us, we get into debt because we have this unhealthy desire to acquire. We're feeling a need that only God can fill. Or maybe we have this need for instant gratification. You know, there, there used to be, years ago, we lived by a rule. When you ran out of money, you stopped spending. We need to get back to that rule, Okay. It's not, it's not a way in America anymore. In America, the average American is, is $5,500 in credit card debt and has three credit cards, meaning we maxed out one, we got another, maxed that out, got another, charged that up. My goodness, you guys, it's time, it's time to get our, our lives back in order in this area. And we all get the letters, sometimes in our mailboxes. You, yes, you have been, what? Pre-approval, thank you. I've been looking for approval all my life. I'm pre-approved. This is great. This is great. Here, when it's, when, it's, when it's harvest time, not only do we put God first, handle it, put God first, but some of, we need to attack the debt. The, look, here's what the Bible says. This is biblical. Romans chapter 13 says it this way. Let no debt remain outstanding. I'm messing you up today. Oh, no, I'm Jack. Come on. Come on, when, you get it, when, it's, when it's harvest season, you reap, not only give God first, but you need to tackle the debt. Go after your debt. Don't let that debt remain outstanding. Accept the continuing debt of love to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. So my advice here, if you need budget help and financial help, we have a class, a group this season called Financial Peace University on Wednesdays here at Discovery at 6.30. If you want to jump into that, I mean, it doesn't cost anything. You can just take the class. If you want to pay for material, you could do that. But if you need help in this area, I'd really encourage that. So here's the, here's the challenge for this one to handle our harvest. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pay off all of our debt using the snowball method. Some of you need to take this challenge, okay? All of your debt. So here's what the snowball method is. The snowball method says, take all of your credit card debt, all that debt, and prioritize them. List them by highest interest to lowest interest. And here's what you do. Pay the low, the, the, just the lowest amount, what is due on all of your debt except for your highest interest debt and throw as much of your harvest at that one. Still staying a good steward, still using good financial principles, but pour as much of your harvest to tackle that debt. And when that one is gone, go to the next one. Pour as much in, go to the next one. It's the snowball method. And eventually we're gonna be debt free in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen, somebody? handle your harvest. It is possible. If you handle it, if you stay in step and in season, it's possible. Okay, so how do we, what's the third way to handle it? You got to handle it. Every time we get it, every time we reap, what are we doing? Putting God first. We're, we're getting rid of debt. Number three is, we're going to increase our savings. 
That's what we need to do. That's what wise people do. Many people think that they don't have enough to actually do this one. Man. You ever heard, act your age? Act your age. You know, people, people need to start acting their wage. Act your wage. Act your wage already. Come on. That outfit's above your wage. Get out of here, man. Those shoes are above your wage. What you doing to those shoes? That car's above your wage. That house above your wage. You know why we don't have, we can't do this and we can't handle our harvest and stay in step and in season with harvest is because you're living above your wage. You're living above your salary. You got to live under your means, not above your means. Start living under your means, man, and handle your harvest. And if you do that, I promise you, there is exponential power of harvest when you handle it. There is a rhythm and a pace. And when you get out of pace and you try to get more, 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 and live above, 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 you just get in debt and it will crush you. It'll kill you. It'll destroy your family. It destroys marriages. It destroys lives. Stay in step. Stay in season. God's word still works. Instead of squandering all of it, or eating all the harvest, getting more, doing more, experiencing more, the wise put some aside for next season because it's not always a season of harvest. It's not always. Proverbs 6 says this, go to the ant, you lazy dog, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. You know, there's another Bible verse that says, "If, if you don't work, you don't eat. Tell that to your young adult child, okay? I'm just kidding. Go get a job. Go to the ant, you slugger. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander or overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food in harvest. It takes some of that harvest. The wise, the wise know how to handle their harvest. The wise will get that harvest and they'll put God first. They'll, they'll make sure priorities. God, you are first. They're going to tackle some of that debt. They're gonna, and then they're going to put some, some of that harvest aside for next season because in Jesus' name, Man, here at Discovery Church, we're going to get our finances in order. We're going we're gonna to get out of debt. We're going to start getting, getting our finances in, in godly order. But, but then accidents happen. The car breaks down. The medical expense. And if you're not doing this last principle, you'll go back into debt because you didn't put some aside. And you know what? I know I want to take that vacation, so I'm not going to charge it on my credit card and get into debt again. I'm going to store some harvest aside. I'm going to put some more. And I'm going to put it in a different account because I keep going negative in that account. So I'm going to put it in this account. Come on, somebody. Handle your harvest. Handle it. Handle it. Stay in step with God. Stay in season with God in the season of harvest. You have it. You have harvest. And the reason why it's not, it's not multiplying is because you ain't handling it. You're not handling it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to save a $1,000 as an emergency fund. If you haven't done that, that's my challenge. That's the challenge of this one right here for you to handle it. Save $1,000. Put it aside. Even if you have to in a separate account, build it up. Get $1,000 so you don't go back into debt when the next thing happens and the crisis happens or when the kids want to go to Disneyland or whatever it is, you don't go into debt. You put some aside. Amen? There's, there's timing is everything. There's a right time and a right season. There's a right way. There's a right action for a right time. Some of you are here today and you're not here by accident. You are not here by accident. This is the right time. And you sense God and you know he's calling you. And, and, and previously, when you sense this, you've applied the wrong action and you ran and you didn't surrender. You didn't give in. But today in Jesus name, timing is everything. We're going to apply the right action to the right time. I think some decisions need to be made today. Some decisions need to be made today about the season that we are in to not only handle our harvest, some decisions about the harvest, but I think some eternal decisions need to be made today. That some of you, it's time and you know it. And you know it. Come on, let's bow our head.